So welcome back to Espresso and Kabbalah. We are here to enjoy the incredible Kabbalistic teachings that give us so much energy and wisdom and guidance. So cheers. <laughs> L'chaim. L'chaim to good health and happiness and peace of mind and everything good for everyone. So cheers. So, as we were saying, these incredible Kabbalistic teachings give us so much inner joy and inner peace, and it's kind of like Kabbalah through the lens of Hasidus. So, through the lens of Kabbalistic mysticism, we get to it on an everyday level. So how do I make my everyday better? How do I make my everyday interactions with my friends, with my family? How do I bring it all to a place where I can choose joy, where I can choose inner peace, where I can bring out that inner spark that's within me and within every single person and every Jew and every neshama as we talked about. So as we discussed, we all have an inner spark, an inner light, an inner glow within which is always good and always perfect and just has like literally the keys to everything that we need in this world to be happy and to be healthy and joyous. So welcome back to Espresso and Kabbalah. I'm so happy that we're all here this morning learning together and hopefully we'll take away some insights which can give us a glimpse of what we can uh, do with that inner spark, what we can achieve with our inner sense of purity and godliness. And today is a gorgeous day in South Florida, sunny, breezy. It's a perfect day to learn um, some Kabbalah with a sip of espresso. <laughs> so uh, we find ourselves in the practical Tanya. And as we know, Tanya is the core book of Jewish mysticism, of Jewish philosophy. and. It's written by the Alter Rebbe, who was the first Chabad um, Rebbe, and he taught us all of these secrets. And people would come to him and say, I'm having trouble, I'm trying to experience you know, my best life, live my, be my best self, and I'm, ha I'm bumping into like, challenges. Um, you know, I'm hitting bumps along the way. And the Alter Rebbe said, you, know, you are all coming to meet with me, and this is, you know, everyone has questions, and I'm going to put all the answers into a book for you all, my dear students. And this is the book that we're learning today. It's called the Tanya. So it's really like a true guidebook and answers to our everyday conundrums and wonders. <laughs> um, and it really gives us so much guidance and energy. And this is adapted by Rabbi Chaim Miller, and he does a wonderful job bringing it to modern English for us <laughs> to enjoy. So, this week we're on chapter 11 of the Tanya, and we've gone through so much so far. It's really incredible. We've had such a fun journey learning together, and it's called the Russia. We're on page 131. Um, and the Russia means the wicked person, which it doesn't connote such a good, <laughs> what comes to mind when you hear something like that? Exactly. All the negative, all the evil, just all in one place. And the Alter Rebbe is going to teach us that we're all capable of so much good, and at the same time we're capable of choosing evil, but it's not about our actions, because no matter how many times we slip up and mess up and say and do and think the wrong thing, as we've discussed the three levels of action, our thought, speech, and action, we can always access that inner spark, that inner light, that gives us a chance to express our true nature. Because when we express who we truly are, that's the best part of us. That's the healthy, vibrant, living, joyful part of us. So when we express what we really are, we're not gonna be the wicked person. But occasionally we mess up, and that's part of life too, right? We have to acknowledge there are difficulties and challenges, and we're here to work on that. So the Russia is a category of the human experience that the Alter Rebbe teaches us. Russia means the wicked person. 
So we're going to turn to page 132. Um, last week we talked about the complete tzaddik and the incomplete tzaddik. Those were the saints, the saintly people in our world. The people who have zero conflict, zero negative desire. We, we can't even relate to that because we struggle every day. And this book is called The Book for In-Betweeners, which means we struggle. We're trying to be good. Sometimes it, we get there. Sometimes we, you know, always a, a work in progress to conquer our inner nature. So what does it mean to be a wicked person in today's chapter? Zeh Parak Yud Aleph, the 11th chapter of Tanya, V'zeh l'umatzeh, Rasha v'tevlai l'umat sadek v'ralai. So God has made one opposite the other. Okay? So this is how the world works. It's dualities. It's a mirror. And the forces of evil mirror the forces of good. Right? So in the spiritual realm, but also we'll see in the way people express themselves in their personality. Um, we discussed this a little in the prior weeks, but if somebody is really, really good at something, they can use that power for the really, really good or for the evil because we, we have the chance. There's a mirror in the world and everything can be used for its opposite. The Russia, so we'll, we'll delve into the text a little and then we'll explain. Sound good? Um, so the rasha, meaning the wicked person who has it good, is the conceptual opposite of the tzaddik who has it bad. Um, so we had the tzaddik last week, and he had like so little evil in him, it's just completely conquered. Um, l'chaim. <laughs> Delving into the wonderful text and the ideas, let it inspire us to be the best we can be today. Cheers. Okay, always, always good to have Kabbalah with a, a sip of espresso. And we have babka too, so always rounding out the picture. This means that in the incomplete Russia, the good in his divine soul, right? So we said everyone has a divine soul and an animal soul. And we have such a perfect divine soul that only wants to be amazing and perfect and then we also have the animal soul which struggles with human desires to just have fun and self-gratification you know the one that doesn't is a little more self-centered so these souls are found in both his brain and the right chamber of his heart right the, the godly soul is in the right and that one is suppressed and voided by the evil in the left chamber of his heart which comes from klipa so we're talking about the sub levels of the different categories of people the Alter Rebbe teaches us about. This status too of incomplete Russia is subdivided into many tens of thousands of different levels. Depending on the extent to which the good is suppressed and voided by evil quantitatively and qualitatively. God forbid. Right? Because we don't want to call anybody wicked. This is theory. Um, so for example, at one extreme, there's a person whose good is suppressed and voided by his evil to a minuscule extent. Even then, it might not be in a permanent state or even a common one at frequent intervals. And only on rare occasions will the evil in him Overwhelm the good, conquering his body, the small city. Ah, lai kule ella miksasai We're on page 133. Um, even then, the evil may not conquer all of his body, but only a part of it. Shehaya sarl which will obey the whim of his evil. So the incomplete Russia may be overcome by his evil only rarely and to a minimal extent. Um, so I just want to point out here. So the Alter Rebbe teaches us that there's a spectrum of the human experience. He says, on one side, we have the perfect godly person, the saint. On the other extreme, we have this chapter, which is about the wicked guy. I mean, we have Passover coming up with the wicked son. I don't know if you guys remember the four sons of the Seder. We have the Chacham, the, Rosh, the wicked son, the wise one, the wicked, the simple, and the in-betweener. So it's very important to note the Lubavitcher Rebbe teaches us that there is no person in this world who is utter and complete 
evil, like only, only evil, because we all have a spark of God, a spark of the divine, and even if we mess up, there's always a chance that we can have a spark of teshuva, which means just like that, that feeling of, hey, I can do better. You know, I, I may have slipped off my game a little bit recently, but I, I'm, tomorrow's going to be better. We all have that innate essence and desire to be good. We all have the desire to be our true, beautiful, shining selves. And there's no such person who is completely wicked. Like the Rasha Gamor, the Lubavitcher Rebbe says, is not someone who exists. He's a, a Jew always has a spark in him who's ready to act on, you know, we're always ready to go back to our best, brightest selves. And sure, we have moments of messing up, and that's totally normal and part of life. <laughs> like, that's not going away until Mashiach comes. We're going to have evil. We're going to have difficulty. But it's important to note that no one should ever say, I'm stuck. No one should ever say, I'm, I'm labeled as wicked, and that's the end of my story, and I'm over. Because even people who really mess up, there's always a soul inside. And that soul inside is worthy and beautiful, and everyone deserves empathy and respect and love. And they're worthy of enjoying this beautiful world which God created. And um, you know, no one's, there's no such thing as a lost cause, a lost case. That's, that's what we're learning here today in the Tanya. So when we discuss the Russia, the wicked guy, it's not like he is a wicked person. We're discussing a moment, a moment of someone who stumbles to temptation, who messes up and isn't acting the way that they actually really, really want to behave. Um, so it's kind of like we can shift from moment to moment. We can have a moment of being a complete saint, just someone who's caring for another, studying Torah, you know, being a channel of the divine of godliness in this world. And we have moments of struggle. We have moments where we subdue our inner, inner temptation and we conquer it and we act kindly, even though we may be having a difficult feeling. So this is all different moments and realms of the human experience and we should never let ourselves get down. That's really what we're saying here. Um, so the Tanya demonstrated that it says that Vinasa Lai in the middle of page 133 of the Practical Tanya, Merkava Ulavush Lihislabish by Echad Mishlesha Lavushahanis Karma El. So when, let's say we mess up, right? Uh, we say a word of gossip, right? Slander. We, we mess up, we speak something that we don't mean to say, or we say something, it's so hard to think of an example of something negative, like we're all such good people, right? <laughs> but we do something we really, that's not the true, it's not the true me. I'm sure we can all think of examples of things we struggle with, and sometimes we slip, sometimes we do the thing that we didn't really, really mean to do. What happens in that moment is we become a vehicle, a garment for the evil, right? We're letting it become dressed in one of our garments of thought, speech, and action. So we discussed in the Tanya that these things are garments. What's a garment? It's, it's an outfit. I can go to my closet and change. I'm not limited or bound forever to what I'm wearing. Like my kids go through mountains of laundry, outfit changes, multiple outfit changes per day because they're kids. And they're never stuck with what they're wearing. Right? So too with us, if we think maybe a negative thought or utter a word of speech that may not be the kindest, truest expression of who we are, or we do something that's not the best expression of what a nice Jewish girl or nice Jewish boy should be doing, that's a garment. That's something we can literally switch. We can go to our closet, take off the negative garment, and put on a positive garment. And voila, we are now expressions of our godly soul. It's as simple as that. The Alter Rebbe teaches us, Ki karov ma'od. it is so close to you. It's like opening the fridge and taking out an apple. It's like we don't have to look around the world for inspiration to be our best selves. We don't have to travel to Nepal and India and Bali to discover our pure inner goodness. It's right there. Literally, reach out and pick the fruit. Like It's in your soul, which God gave you at birth. It says that the soul is 
Hashem blew his soul into the nostrils of Adam, the first person who was created. We, we have a soul that's in us. It's like the breeze outside. You can walk outside and feel the fresh air. It's simple as that, taking a deep breath and recalibrating. Who am I really? Who do I really want to be? Do I want to choose joy? Do I want to choose the life? It says, Ubacharta Bachayim. Choose life. Hashem asks the Jewish people, come on, you guys, choose life. You have a choice in front of you. I gave you the gift of free choice. And all you have to do is reach out and choose that choice that you really, really want to have. So we're talking about the Russia who's giving um, a vehicle to evil, but we have to remember it's never as stuck as that. Even someone who's, you know, getting arrested for his crimes, he always has a chance to turn around and, and be good and, and be his true self. So what are these transgressions? What are we, what are we talking about? Um, we'll go back into the text in the middle of page 133. All good? Dehainu, I la averas kalais. This might be in the realm of action alone, carrying out some minor things. So it says like any time that we let anything take over us, that's not what God wants from us, right? It's, it's letting other forces take over. It's kind of like being possessed. And we can all relate to that, right? When we do something we don't want to do, it's like, who was that? Like, who is talking over there? Because that's not me, right? Like it's, it's simply a spirit of foolishness that entered through me. It's not who my soul really wants to be. Um, it says, I bedibor levad, la dabar avakla shanhara, beletsanos, ukahai gavna, in the realm of speech alone, someone can speak borderline slander or borderline mockery, God forbid. So these are um, speech um, transgressions. Um, so it might be the realm of thought alone, someone's like thinking, you know how they say like premeditated crime is worse? Because when we think through things that we want to do that are not appropriate, like we're letting our minds be possessed by foolishness, by evil forces. It's not our mind, you know, it says the Bashamtov says where somebody's mind is, that's where they are. So where where we let our minds wander, um, that's where we are. So it says in the Tanya, interestingly, like someone can say, How could I be held responsible for what I think? Like it's not fair. Um, so it says interestingly, have you ever noticed a thought entering your mind? And you can almost like choose whether or not you want to enter that like neural process. <laughs> so we cannot control the thoughts that bubble up. They're like a river. Like they're never going to stop. As long as we're alive, sleeping, awake, the thoughts are going to bubble up into our minds. But we can choose which ones we want to explore. Right? Have you ever looked in the mirror and been like, oh, you know, we start thinking negatively. We can stop, stop, control, alt, delete, replace with a positive thought. I'm amazing. I'm beautiful. I'm an ashama. Like these things are literally in our control. So we don't have control over what bubbles up in our minds, but we have absolute control over which thoughts we choose to engage with and daydream and meditate and fantasize about. Like those are in our control. So we have the responsibility to keep our minds in a positive, uplifting, like state of good and like accomplishing. And we have control also. Like let's say, you know, have you ever spoken to someone who's like triggering your anxiety? And like they bring you into a negative thought spiral. Like, don't enter those situations where your mind is gonna be hijacked by thoughts that make you anxious or worried or upset. Like we have control over where we wanna place our minds. We can think happy thoughts, we can go somewhere that makes us happy. You know, we all know our Sometimes I like to ask people, what's your like five things that like bring you joy, like make you happy? Like boom, some people, what, what would you say? I don't know. Anyone have any thoughts to share? Like music, uh, fresh fruit, going on a walk, calling up someone who like, sparks joy in my life, um, fresh sheets, fresh linen, <laughs> um, you know, just like happy, good things. These are things that we literally can bring into our day and make the conscious choice. Is there something? It's just like a happiness sparker. Music. Music. I know I love that. It's such a good way to like 
snap into a good mood. So we can literally activate positivity in our thoughts, speech, and action. So what does it say? Um, if a person is like, you know, thinking, we're going to turn to page 134, um, thinking or speaking or acting in ways that are negative, it does violate a Torah prohibition because we have, like it says, guard yourself from evil things. We're, we have a responsibility to place ourselves in a positive situation. Um, and this is relating specifically to men who have the obligation to study Torah like all day. Women have a different, the beach, I love that. Um, Tracy said she loves to go to the beach to be happy. So this is an example of a person who has the obligation to study Torah at every available moment and they're like literally um, men who are charged with this obligation are responsible to keep their minds focused at every moment during the day. Women's avoda, like our job, is a little different. We are charged with the obligation to love God, to fear God, to have faith in God, and to study texts which bring us to an awareness of God in our everyday lives. Um, but we don't have as strict of a like mind control thing. It's very interesting. So what does it say? Um, <clears throat> A person who lets himself stray and gets into places and in, that he doesn't just does, like shouldn't be in, whether it's an action, speech, or even thought, he's classified as a Russia for that moment. He let foolishness take over the engine, and it's not him driving the car, <laughs> right? So we we have this situation. We mess up, and and that's that's something that can be changed. It's not something we're stuck in. What does it say? Shehara shebanafshe gavar by the evil in his animal soul overwhelmed the good in his divine soul. So we have two souls. We're not just animalistic. We have the godly soul and the animal soul. What are the two souls? It's a pop quiz. What are the two souls that are in the Tanya? The godly soul and the animal soul. Exactly. So we have two voices and we're born with a struggle. They're constantly <laughs> fighting battling, waging war, I'm going to win over the body, I'm going to win over the body, and they each, it's called two kings in the Tanya, they each really, really, really want our, like, we want, they want us to win, and, and they want, they want to win over us, so you know the example we talk about with the wolves, right, um, which wolf is going to win? The one you feed. The one you feed, exactly, the one you feed, I love that example, because what better way is there to show which wolf is going to get stronger? Right? We consistently feed the winning wolf. And when we give in to negative temptations and we slip into those, those patterns that just get us again and again and again, we're letting that wolf get really strong. And it's in our, in our capacity to literally strengthen the divine godly wolf part of our soul to say, hey, I'm going to conquer that negative mood right now, and I'm going to go do something positive. I'm going to go do something for a friend who really needs help. I'm going to look out who can I help right now. I'm going to open a book of Torah and study something positive. I'm going to study the, the Torah portion of the week. I'm going to do a mitzvah, do, do something that takes care of my body. I'm going to go for a run. and That's a mitzvah, too. Um, anything positive, we literally can strengthen that wolf. And then that wolf is like... Next time a, a struggle occurs, like, boom, game, game over. Like, he's so strong, it doesn't take as much effort the next time. So we're investing in the godly soul when we let her win. So the Russia is someone who the, the animal soul is really a, a strong wolf. <laughs> and it keeps getting fed by more and more indulgence in, like, negative temptations. Um, and the animal soul is strong enough at that point to overwhelm the divine soul and gains control. Um, and especially with the little things. Do you ever notice how the little things trip us up the most? There's a great example of the, of the um, one of the Rebbeim speak about the Yetzir Hara, the negative like evil guy impulse in our, in our like psyche. The evil voice, he comes in a silk kapata, which is like a nice, Shabbos outfit <laughs> and he's never gonna say like go rob a bank at gunpoint like he's not gonna tell us to do something like crazy because he knows us like we're not gonna listen to such like wild ideas if it's not what we 
normally do. So he comes and he says, just like, I'm, I'm pious, like I'm godly, I'm, I'm here to, to serve you and help you. Just do that one teeny tiny little thing. It's, it's not gonna make that big a difference. And like, it's, it's so easy to slip because it's so little. It's like, I'm not, I'm not foolish. I'm just like giving in a little. You know, so that's how they get us. And that's why the, the altar of is pointing out here, like even the teeniest, tiniest transgression in the mind lets the, the animal soul win. Not because, you know, we're such bad people, but because a teeny tiny deviation from what Hashem wants is letting the evil take control of the Ferrari. And like, we're not in the driver's seat anymore. So that's why the more we're aware of the little things, the easier they are to like snap and be like, hey, I noticed myself going in a negative thought pattern. No, I heard this like the other day, control, alt, delete. Stop, let that thought go, and I'm amazing, I can do this, like everything is great, think good and it will be good. Like whatever positive uh, man mantra, mantra um, that you have going for you that day, like, let the let the little things be victories and then we're on the path to success so what does it say he lets his um animal soul gain control and he he then has a little regret right we get a little regret in those moments the bottom of page 134. afterwards the after by the the good and the divine soul will overwhelm him and he will regret what he did and request God's forgiveness and pardon. And God will definitely forgive him. They say even if someone commits suicide, which is a horrible, terrible thing that no one should ever experience their loved ones going through, um, even that, which is... A sin right it's not permitted according to the Torah to, to take one's life God forbid even someone who does that is considered to have had a thought of regret at the moment because we have a divine soul we have a spark in us which always wants to do good and that's why we consider that person pardoned because for sure there was an element of regret and desire for doing the right thing um, at some point in time. So we always, always, always have an inner core, an inner godly light that is shining no matter what we're going through, no matter how bad or silly or stupid we find ourselves behaving. There's an inner spark that has regret, that wants to do the right thing. Um, it says he'll regret what he did, page 135, and request God's forgiveness and pardon. Hashem And God will definitely forgive him. So here we have it. If anyone's ever down in the dumps or having a tough moment, open up the Tanya, chapter 11, the Hashem Yislechle, God will definitely forgive him. There's nothing too far gone. There's nothing too messed up. No one is, you know, damaged goods. We're all capable of tapping into that beautiful, pure spark of Hashem. And like it says in the Tanya, uh, a few chapters back, the soul is chelek eloka mima al mamish, which means a literal, many of us speak Hebrew, chelek eloka mima al mamish, a piece of God, like a literal portion of Hashem from above is in us. So how can we ever be considered tarnished or imperfect? We have, we're, we're walking around with a piece of God in us, and that enables us to literally um, have the power of infinity to do anything that we ever wanted to do and accomplish. We can do it. <laughs> We're infinite. Um, and it starts with this, with being forgiven for messing up, you know. And it, we, we can start with our loved ones. Like, every moment is brand new. Every moment, you know, is a, is a time where we can say, hey, let's, let's look at the best in each other. You know, maybe we had tough times, but let's like take this moment and go forward and just be like, you have a spark of divine in you, I have a spark of divine in me, 
sure, we have external differences. We may not agree on everything. We may not do the same thing in every situation. We may not always even get along. But on the inside, we're the same. And we can literally find the best in each other and forgive each other the way that Hashem forgives us, even in grave mistakes. <laughs> Um, how bad could we, we really be? You know, we're all in the same boat. We're all in this together. And sure, some things are quite unforgivable sometimes, but in those situations, we talk about, you know, we have to deal with things, um, let Hashem take care of some things. And, you know, if something is really toxic and really evil, you know, we can forgive in our hearts and, you know, we can let Hashem forgive uh, it's not like anything is f like no one is evil forever but we always have to remember there are shalash there are three impure evils that are toxic and we don't have to deal with toxicity sometimes our job is to push it away with two hands and not not allow evil and negativity into our lives so there's always something like I was just talking to a friend and we were saying how it says in um the Friediker of the previous Rebbe's um, Maimarim, the Hasidic discourse, Chanoch Lenaar Al Pi Darko, educate a child according to his way. What does this mean? It means that there's no like one size uh, thing that everyone is gonna like get the same, and you know, it's not like we treat everyone the same way at all times. Everyone has their own way to be reached, their own way to give them a hug, their own way to talk to them and reach them and be there for them you know obviously Israel love of a fellow Jew that looks different in different situations so just like Hashem is there for all of us at all moments in time we can be there for each other um, even if it's in a different way um, yeah so that's that's the message here um, any questions so far before we go into the rest of the text or we're good to go on so what does it say? God will definitely forgive him. So provided that he has followed the guidelines of our sages of blessed memory, how to carry out a minimally acceptable repentance. So sure, we can all be forgiven, uh, but we have to be ready to work on it. We ha someone has to be in a place where they want to work on themselves in order to be granted that, you know, the way forward. Like it says, Rashis Avaida um, He Kabbalah's all, right? The first part of serving God is accepting the yoke of I accept, I commit to what Hashem wants. But before we even accept, it says Avaida. The first step in serving God is to serve Him. Meaning, I have to be ready to bring goodness into my life. You know? So, we have to kind of take the step one, say, I'm ready to do something good, I'm ready to make a positive change, and then we can move forward. So even the Russia, he has to have that moment where he's like, okay, game over, we're going to do something good now. So we're on page 135 in the Practical Tanya. Um, we're almost done with the chapter, so we're going to wrap up in the text, and then we'll, we'll have more questions. Um, so we said he does tshuva and he goes through these cycles, right? We all go through cycles, sin, remorse, tshuva, uh, repentance, and then later on sin again. Um, he's capable of sin because he has an animal soul, he has evil in him. So we can always, we have the ability to slip off and mess up, but we're able to get back on the wagon. The Tanya's classification of Sadik and Rasha or on the paragraph near the bottom of the page, it looks at your inside, your propensity for evil based on what lurks in your animal soul. So in the Tanya's eyes, even after you've done shiva for your sins, it says you're still a Russia so long as you have not uprooted the cause of those sins, the residual evil in your heart. The shleisha chalukei kapara shahayarabi shmal derish chalo. The criteria for minimal acceptable repentance are the three levels of atonement expounded by Rabbi Yishmael, as will be explained elsewhere. So according to the Tanya, we have moments of 
evil, but they can be rectified through three stages of repentance, which are vidoy, charata, and kabbalah ala asid. So charata is regret. Vidoy is saying aloud what we did wrong. And then kabbalah ala asid means accepting on the future. This isn't going to happen again. So it's like when we speak to small children, we say, you know, we, we try to inspire regret. Like, look, that person that is hurt is crying. Like, they feel bad. They're, they're, they're in pain. They're hurting. Um, we apologize. We articulate what was done wrong. And we say, I'm so sorry I hurt you. I'm not going to do it again. So those are the stages of repentance. Um, so now we're going to turn to section two, the last part of chapter 11. Um, there is a part, first of all, Lachaim, <laughs> that we should all conquer that negative spirit and only uh, bring positivity into our lives that we're all capable of. So um, <laughs> that was a mild guy that we talked about <laughs> prior to this section. <clears throat> this is a more severe offender in the next part. So we'll see what, what's going to happen to him. Because <laughs> sometimes we mess up in a more serious way, right? What happens? Vyesh. So he's going to illustrate another character in the Tanya. <laughs> Um, and it's so much like Passover, which is coming up, and we talk about these characters, like the sons, and it's like, we learn from examples, right, of what people can be like. The Yesh, there's also the person. Mishahara Gaiver by Yeser. It's the person who's evil, overwhelms him more strongly. Umislapshim by Kol Shleshalavashim Shalhara. It's not just in his thought, it's in contrast to the other guy, the mild Rasha. He just sins in one area, a thought, speech, or action. In this more severe case, the evil is dressed in all three garments of thought, speech, and action. It's like the guy who's thinking to uh, rob a bank. Like, he, it's premeditated. <laughs> he thought about it. He spoke about it. He said he's going to do it. Like, you can't say that he was just acting impulsively. And he did it. So, thought, speech, and action. It's like the complete engine of the car is being run by evil. Complete, awful negativity. Negative spirit. Um, and in contrast to the mild Russia, the severe Russia is overwhelmed by his evil. So it's like the wolf is so strong and it's causing him to commit more serious sins more frequently. So this is something that um, when we deaden our sensitivity, have you ever felt a sensitivity to something like, oh, I shouldn't do that? Like, it's not me. Like, I, I can do better, you know? Like, we, we get, like, a spur of sensitivity to something, whether it's something we're about to say or do or think. Like, we get a, a, a shielding because we're sensitive. So the person who is committing these kinds of things, he's deadened his sensitivity. He said over and over again, he said, oh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. And he's, like, worn down that sensitivity, and it's, like, then you get the sociopath, right? He has no empathy. So it's like, we should treasure our sensitivity because that's a gift. The fact that we can be like, mm -mm, like, that's not for me. Like, I, I'm sensitive to that. That's something special. That's something we should celebrate and like ex expand upon, expound upon, and let ourselves be more and more sensitive to doing the right thing. Um, so this guy is like, no sensitivity at all. Nevertheless, even with this Russia, the influence of his evil side is incomplete, and the good within him will surface too. So he has good as well within him. Ach bin Tayim, Mitzcharet, but between bouts of sin, um, even this guy will experience remorse. Uba Emlai, Hirhore Tshuva, and thoughts of repentance will enter his mind. Even this bank robber in our example, he might have moments of regret. He might say, those, those poor people, <laughs> like, I shouldn't be doing this. I, I'm better than this. I have a spark of, divine, of the divine in me. I'm not a bank robber at heart. He experiences moments of charata, of regret, of remorse, of I can do better. Tomorrow, that's it. Tomorrow's going to be a better day. And where does this come from? Where does this spark of like, hey, I can fix things. I can do better. 
Mibchinas Hatayev Shebenafshe, Shemizgaber Kesas Bintayim. So this book is such a gift because it tells us the anatomy of our soul. And it says, hey, we all mess up, we all have challenges, we all struggle, our loved ones struggle. Hey, we're all the same. We all have a divine soul and an animal soul and we all struggle and we're all going through difficult moments sometimes. But hey, I can forgive my friend and I can forgive myself because there's a spark of good in there. There's goodness inside. It says there's good within his soul, which gathers a little strength in the period between sins. It's almost like the two wolves are fighting and like between wrestling matches, the defeated wolf will start like licking his wounds and recovering and getting a, a little bit of his strength back. Maybe he'll sip some soup or have, you know, a cup of tea, just nurture his broken spirit. And that's the godly soul in this totally battered human being. It's, it's like gaining energy between bouts of sinning. So he's trying to bring out that goodness in him because the good is extremely weak and it's not strong enough to sway his evil inclination. It's like when the battle comes, he's just knocked over again. However, right? So this good does not gain sufficient traction to win over the evil. He's a weak wolf. Am lifrei shmechata v'gam, right, to lead him completely to desist from his sins through tshuva. Lias maida v'ezev, to be one who confesses and abandons his sins, right? Like, cease and desist, no more, no more evil. So we're on the last line of the chapter that we're learning for today. Ba'al zeh, and um, thanks everyone for bearing with us in this really interesting chapter, chapter 11 of the Tanya. The al zeh, and it was in reference to such a person, Amru Rabbi Senu, that the sages of blessed memory said, the wicked are full of regrets. Meaning, even those who are wicked, or those moments where we call ourselves wicked, where we fall, we're full of goodness. Regrets in this case is not regret that holds us back, it's regret that propels us forward to a place of, you know, like when we run back and then we can spring forth, like in a sprint. So this regret is something that we feel like bitterness and like, oh, like we feel bad in those moments. It's not a fun, it's a difficult feeling. So it's almost like a few steps back where we have to feel a little difficult and a little pain and remorse, but then it springs into a springboard of growth and added sunshine and positivity into our lives. Um, even the wicked are full of regrets. We all have this capability to be better to want to be better. Um, so this refers to the severe case. <laughs> um, he, he has enough good to contemplate repentance regularly, but not enough to actually repent, right? Like the guy who wants to quit his negative habit and he really wants to, but he can't. And he really, 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 really wants to, but he can't, like, it's hard. Shehem rai for rishaim sheyish p'chinas tayv v'naf shemadayim. This accounts for the rishaim. They harbor some good in their souls. Um, and that's where we get this Jewish guilt concept from, right? Even when we mess up, we always harbor this influence from the divine soul, which says, come on, you know you can do better, you know you can be your true, good, beautiful self. So the practical lessons that we learn today, um, on page 134, it says, someone who sins once a year and someone who sins once a minute they have something in common which is they have evil in them it hasn't been eliminated um, it can overcome and they're at war with their darker side right we're all in this together basically and page 136 it says so long as you have not transformed your animal soul to good you are likely to follow a cycle of sin repentance and sin again right which is really what we're here for the rest of our lives. It doesn't mean that our repentance was insincere, it just needs to go deeper in order to get to, to get us to a place of real change. So it says it's possible through many sins to banish the divine soul's influence but never its presence. So maybe its sensitivity will be a little harder to sense but it's always, always there. And the main thing that we have to remember in today's chapter, we're on the last line, um, 
Ach, Misha, in a miscarriage, the island, but in Baum, like her, 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 this caused the good to depart from inside him. I can't even read such words. It doesn't, it's not um, part of the lexicon of the, of the Jewish people. We all have good within us, but the Alter Rebbe is pointing out this extreme example. If someone causes the good to depart, it has no role in his inner life. Obviously, his divine soul is not banished. It's just his influence has been banished. But I made Bipriyas Makif Alav Milamayla. So this person, this good still exists hovering above his body, but it doesn't actually penetrate into his everyday actions. That is why the sages say over every ten the divine presence rests, even if someone is a Russia in the crowd, because when the divine soul's influence is banished, its presence still hovers and rests over the body. Meaning, even if someone is so, so far out that they're called evil, evil, never regretting, never remorseful, they still have a godly... Uh, presence that's hovering over them and that means that they could be counted for a minion they could be counted as part of the Jewish people um, because they always have a godly soul they always have a godly spark so today's chapter 11 we discussed the wicked person and that's that moment that we each struggle and like find just difficulty and how do we get through the next moment and the Alter Rebbe is teaching us, hey, even in those difficult moments, your divine, your soul is constantly within you. It's constantly pumping out good influence of desire to do the right thing and the desire to be your best self. So that is chapter 11. Next week is chapter 12, which is called The In-Betweener. Um, that's exciting because that's the name of our book. So we're going to say, what is the in-betweener? We talked about the saint. We talked about the wicked. Next week is, who's the in-between guy? We, we want to be that guy. I don't know if we could be, uh, we're not really in the, in the extreme camps. We're in between, ideally. Um, so next week, we're going to talk about the Benoni. What is the guy who is struggling, and he wants to be good, and he achieves control and self-mastery. So that's a very, very interesting chapter. Um, chapter 13 is called The Benoni's Complex Life, where <laughs> why, what happens when it's so, so difficult to struggle and how it works and all that. And we discover all about our truth, living in the now, chapter 14, how to become a Benoni. So this is all about the the conquest of the self, how to be, how to be, how to live in the now, how to enjoy life, how to control our thoughts, speech, and action, um, how to find our inner love of Hashem, and why we are probably on track to being our best, most amazing selves all the time. Um, it's all about consistency and showing up every week and studying all these incredible texts with you guys is just so inspiring to me. It really helps me in my journey of serving Hashem and tapping into that inner self-mastery, that, that part of me that's like, I got this, I'm in control, I can really do it. So, l'chaim, uh, see you all next week. Any questions, feel free to... Speak up or comment or uh, send us a message. And thanks for tuning in to Kabbalah with a sip of espresso. Cheers.